Welcome back investors. This might be one of the most important videos I've done seeing I've completed more than 50 videos in about five months. During this video I will ultimately answer one simple question. Is Proterra undervalued or overvalued and how does that price compare to the rest of the industry? This video will be packed with information so make sure you stick around till the end. How do you spend your weekend? I make Proterra videos. One admin note I will be doing weekly videos on Proterra and Astra Astra I'm going to release tomorrow and I still owe you a video on SNDL that one has been requested I know people want me to revisit that so there's three things at a high level that we're going to talk about during this video we're going to revisit the seeking alpha report where they said this was a strong buy analysts said it was a strong buy at eight dollars we're going to break that down we're going to check their math and I'm going to share it with you we're also going to look at the charts, patterns, and the Bollinger Band. Don't worry. It's not going to take long. I'm building a case to tell you where I believe the price action went three days ago. I talked about how to buy low on this and get in on that dip that went into the $8 range. I'd like to hear what your thoughts are and the feet and feedback in the comments below. Lastly, we're going to go through legislative news and timelines for next week, which could be a big catalyst for the stock not lambos batteries and buses batteries and buses you feel okay if you have not subscribed please do that during this video it would help me out a lot i need less than 290 something additional subs and i'm almost there in the last 28 days 89.6 percent of the people watching my videos have not subscribed i try not to mention it because i want this to happen naturally but honestly i believe the number's so high because there's probably just a lot of people that don't know how much it would help and in the short term first starting your channel this this is a really important number to hit so the goal for my channel for those of you that are new is to stay laser focused on making sure that people that subscribe to my channel get in at the lowest possible price so i'm always going to keep that as my mission statement to make sure that you get in at the lowest possible price on these long-term growth stocks and i'm not always going to get it right but i just want you to know that that is my ultimate goal so thank you so much I appreciate you all. So the story starts with the Seeking Alpha report released on July 10th of 2021. Remember that date. I'm going to put it in the charts in a little bit. So Proterra is promising, but a little too expensive. And this is where there was a sediment change, I believe. And look at this last bullet. Unfortunately, shares are a bit expensive, but it's worth keeping the company on a watch list or making small investments to increase it if the price goes down. So this is where I wanted to check the math. So Proterra expects to be solidly profitable by 2025. Now they're gonna be profitable by 2023. So solidly profitable by 2025. And this is according to the January 2021 uh, investor presentation on slide 39. I know it might be a little fuzzy on your screen. So based on a 3.4 billion market cap at current prices, now remember this was July 10th where I said sediment changed and I believe the price target was around $17 at this point. So a 3.4 billion market cap and the company's trading at a nine times multiple of 2025 estimated free cash flow. Now they've got estimated free cash flow, they circled it down here on 390 million. So that strikes them as, you know, it needs to be 50% of that price, around $8 per share. So this is all estimates. But what I wanted to do with you was I wanted to check the math. So in checking the math, the first thing I wanted to look at was the market cap calculation, just to make sure that their 3.4 number was accurate at the time that they reported it. And I got 3.6, and I think this was the difference of share price. So the share price, and they put estimated. So the share price that they captured was probably different, but I thought it was about $17, so I just guessed. The outstanding shares, if you want to get those, you can go to Proterra's Q2 2021 report, their Q10 filing, and type in, you know, do a little search window and type in outstanding, and you can get the number right here. You can see it's 212-300-222. So I plugged that in, and if you didn't want to calculate market cap yourself, you can get it here. You can see it's 1.9, but I wanted to make sure that I was doing the math right. So if the market cap is share price times outstanding shares. So you can see I, I checked it, got 3.6. It was good enough uh, here for me. So And then the current share price is 9 
14 times that same number. So we got a 1.9 billion market cap and you can see that on Yahoo Finance. So we're five times, we were nine times uh, estimated uh, cash flow uh, times, estimated cash flow for 2025. Now we're five times, which is much lower. So the price to cash flow ratio measures the stock price compared to cash flow per share, and it decides whether the company's under or overvalued, and we've got a 4.97. Now this is current price, right? But it gives us an idea of where we match at, at that, in 2025, at that level, and it would put us in third place right underneath Ford and GM, and you know, I thought it was just kind of funny. Look at Tesla with a 71.75, and you can see some of these numbers are green, so green would be between five or under five. The lower the number, the better. But I think the industry standard is between five and 15 is where you want to be. So you can see this isn't red, but it's at 25. So maybe it's green all the way up till 20 uh, for this chart. So I like Finviz. It gives you some of those data points. But you can see Proterra is not listed in here. So for the price, free cash flow, I couldn't just filter for it. So let's take a look at the charts. You can see that I plotted here on July 9th. This is when that sediment change, the Seeking Alpha article came out. The price declined and it continued to decline until it started to get flat. Right about here is where I did a video talking about the misinformation and how they responded back to that. And then, you know, I had a bullish signal on this and then earnings was coming up and it started to trend up. Earnings came out. Earnings wasn't great. They should have been 4% gross margin. They were only 46% revenue uh, up to half of the year. And the price has been going down. And everyone's been asking themselves, where is the bottom? And I believe we reached the bottom. And that's why three days ago, I did a video talking about how to buy the dip. So 902 is what I've got plotted on here. And then as, as a Anything under 902 is a buy, now it's sitting at 914. And I've got a resistance line that we need to push past of 942. Now I've got other resistance lines in the chart for $16 and seven or $18. I've got a window up here to look out for next week in case this really starts to rocket or launch. So I believe that if we can make it past this 942, there's gonna be levels of resistance. But if this was to take off and really start launching up, I believe that you might see some resistance in these key support levels. Okay, Bollinger Band. Let's take a look at Bollinger Band. So for those of you not familiar with Bollinger Band, just a real simple explanation. In this shaded area, it captures 95% of the stock movement with two deviations up and two deviations down. A 20-day moving average, and you can see I've got uh, selected in here one month, one day, because it best represents what I believe the trend of this stock price has been. So typically when it goes below this, this clouded area, this shaded area for the 95% moving average uh, or the 95% range that this is covering, it's, it's showing one of two things. So it's either showing a downward trend or a buy signal. So you have to look back to understand when the buy signal is happening, but you can see here was a buying signal. This was a trend that was going down, but it might've been difficult to know to buy here just because it was in a downward trend and it, it kept hitting that side. Now, as it starts to level out and form a pattern, you can predict here uh, that there's possibly, you know, uh, potential for this to go back up and you can see this green candlestick was much stronger so here we're starting to see that this down pattern outside this downtrend is starting to reverse and it's outside and this was three days ago it's outside of this 95% uh, range it's two standard deviations down and we're at the bottom I think we're at the bottom now anything could happen Nobody can, nobody's got a crystal ball and they can't absolutely nail this down, predict it. But I'm trying to show you that everything is lining up to say there's a strong level of confidence with all of the data points, not just one, but multiple data points to say that this is going to start going back up. Plus, you know, we're about to transition over to the legislative news.
So when the House returns on August 23rd, it's essential that they pass this budget resolution. Now, if Pelosi pulls off her plan, the infrastructure bill will await a final vote in the House and then Biden's signature. And both chambers of Congress will go about writing the $3.5 trillion spending plan and have until September 15th a target finish date on the portions of the legislation. So if this does not make progress, which I hope it will and I expect that it will, I believe there's solid alignment around the infrastructure plan itself. It's just these other portions of the price tag that are a little bit concerning, plus how they're going to pay for it. So we'll have to stay tuned, but these could have both positive or negative effects on the share price next week. Just to recap, during this video, we checked the Seeking Alpha report and looked at the price to cash flow ratio. We looked at patterns, we looked at charts, we went over price action, we went through the legislation. So that's all I got for this video and I will see you guys in the next one.